Hey folks, do you ever struggle trying to figure out which trade to, to pick? Which one should I use? Which one should I do? Which one's going to make money for me? It's an age old question and that's what we're going to address in this session. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's great to have you joining me. If you don't know me, my name is Jeremy Whaley. I'm coming to you from Trade Maestro. You can learn more over at trademaestro.com. And in this session, we're going to address a topic that literally millions of people around the world struggle with, and that is picking great trades. Now, I don't have time in this particular session to go into the actual analysis, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you six keys to picking great trades. These are just kind of some tips that are going to help you be a better trader. They're going to help you filter out some of the stuff you should be ignoring and ultimately picking some better trades. So let's get started. The first issue or the first key is to turn off the news. Turn off the news. Now, I know that sounds like uh, some politicians lately. I know I, that's not what I'm trying to say, although there is a lot of fake news, especially in financial media. Look, folks, I discovered this about 12 years ago, so this has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with the truth in financial news. The truth is I can sit here and write the headlines. In fact, I've joked about it in the past. Um, you know, if you want to write a financial headline, all you have to do is like pick a crazy event and then figure out, you know, what's the market doing that day. So Dow up 300 points as China hosts a special event of bungee jumping, <laughs> you know, whatever. You just pick something. It doesn't matter. And that's it. The key word is as. You just take what the market's doing and then you tie an event to it. And it has nothing to do with what's actually happening. And yet millions of people flood their computers. They turn on their TVs and they do whatever they have to do to try to get that adrenaline fix of the news media telling them what's about to happen in the financial world. Guess what? They don't know. They're journalists at best. They might even be journalists. I, they're really just entertainers. They're entertainers on the television screen or wherever. Most of them have never traded a stock, never traded an option, never done any analysis. They don't know anything about it. And uh, they're just sitting there telling you what they think. And that's that. So my first key, my first tip, I tell everybody, just turn off the financial news. It's not going to serve you, okay? Second key to picking great trades is to ignore the fundamentals. <gasps> did he really say that? Did he really say ignore the fundamentals? He did. How can I say that? You may not even know what fundamentals are. <laughs> Do you know what fundamentals are? It's all those numbers that you hear about on the financial news. So turn off the news. And it's all the stuff that you think that you need to know in order to pick a trade, but it's not. You don't need to know that. You don't need to know what the theoretical value of the stock should be. Because here's the, here's the truth, folks. How would you know? How would you know what a stock should be worth? You hear people talking about it on television all the time. You know, they've done all their analysis and, you know, such and such stock should be trading at 10 times what it currently is or at five times or such and such is overvalued and it needs to go down. Well, how do they know? How do they know? And I'm going to prove it to you, folks. I'm going to prove it to you because if in theory we were to actually have the market driven by this so-called fundamental data, then we would see a stair step. We wouldn't see the market doing what it does. We would see it going up and it would be going down and up and down. And, um, you know, as as new news comes out, it would kind of ratchet up and then we kind of stay flat. And then as new news comes out, it would kind of ratchet down and it would stay flat or whichever way it went. But that's not how the markets work. Here's how the markets look. This is a real picture of the market. Let me zoom in on it so you can see a little bit better. Yeah, they go up, they go down. You have big crashes and all sorts of ebbs and flows, right? Go back to, uh, if you would, 1999. Or shoot, we could just do it with crypto right now. What's the value of crypto? How does anybody know? And the answer is nobody knows. Nobody knows if a Bitcoin should be trading at 60,000 or at 30,000. It all has to do with demand. And whenever you look at a chart like this, what you're seeing is you're seeing the actual price action of what actually just took place in the trade. Now, how is that different than fundamentals? You see, fundamentals tell us the theory of what they think should happen. The chart tells us what actually just happened. And we get 
second by second, minute by minute, literally tick by tick data of what just happened with the trade. And so what that does is it gives us information that we can immediately start to put into use and start to identify the current sentiment of the trade. And you say, why does sentiment matter? Well, sentiment matters because that's what's driving the trading decision. You see, if uh, somebody finds out that there's, you know, monkeys with a virus in China, then they might freak out and say the market's going to sell off. Well, it turns out that that virus only impacted, um, you know, I don't know, pick something, <laughs> Asian birds. Um, and it had nothing to do with, with another pandemic that was coming, but people reacted to it. And they reacted in what? In speculation. There was nothing about that news that should have driven the price of the stock down, but people reacted to it. They started selling it. Or maybe, you know, something comes out like recently we saw this with, um, with, uh, Virgin Galactic. It's, it's a ticker. It's called space. It's Richard Branson's company. They're going up into space. Right. And so a couple of weeks ago, Richard Branson was going up into space for the first time. And people who were trading space really thought that this stock was going to go to the moon after Richard Branson went into space. The opposite happened. Why? <laughs> because the fundamentals didn't matter, folks. It didn't matter what they had just accomplished. It didn't matter what on paper the theory of the value should be. What matters is what people thought about it. And in that moment, people were all excited about it. So they ran the price up. And then it turned out there was really not a whole lot of substance to it. And the price came tumbling right back down. And we call that sentiment. You cannot get sentiment from your fundamental uh, analysis. You can't get it, but you can get it from right here in your technical analysis. And that's why I say, if you want to be a great trader, and if you want to pick great trades, you have to ignore the fundamentals. And as I teach you more about uh, choosing great trades, you're going to discover why ignoring the fundamentals is a complete, uh, well, why uh, ignoring, why trading fundamentals is a complete waste of time and only trading on technicals is the way you need to go. So anyway, that's my second key is ignore the fundamentals. Third key is to trade the trend. Let's go back to my chart real fast here. If we were to, where is it? There's the chart right there. Take a look at this trend. You know, there's an old saying in technical analysis that says a trend in motion tends to stay in motion. It's kind of a lot like the, uh, the Newton's law of, of uh, motion. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. Take a look at this trend. When you see a trend that is in motion like this, it doesn't really matter what the price is. It doesn't matter. What matters is that the majority of the people that are trading it are buying it. That's what matters. What matters is the momentum is in a bullish direction on this particular trade. Why would you fight that? And yet what literally thousands, hundreds of thousands of traders do is they get in their head that they know better than the collective of the market. And they say, oh, well, such and such stock is too expensive. I think it's going to go down. So they start shorting it or they start selling or whatever. And then the stock just keeps going higher and higher or, you know, vice versa. Sometimes the stock is going down and people are like, oh, I think it's a really great deal. So they start buying it and they have really no justification for doing it other than it's what they think. Well, that in and of itself is speculation. That is speculation. So, you know, a lot of people, they criticize technical analysis and they say that it's, well, they say all sorts of stuff about technical analysis, but you know, they say that it's not based in, in fact. Well, it is based in fact. It's based in the most recent facts available. The recent facts tell us that this is the price that it was most recently traded at just now. Whereas the fundamentals tell us the theory of what we think it should be trading at. Based on XYZ, it should be at such and such price. Well, guess what? Based on XYZ, you had stock analysts and advisors for an entire year telling people to buy Enron while Enron was collapsing and ultimately became one of the greatest disasters in U.S. history. Fundamentals mean nothing, folks. But the technicals, this trend that you see right here, when you see that trend in motion, stay with the trend until it has given definite signals of reversal. And if you will do that, then you will be a much better and ultimately a much more profitable trader. All right. So that's the second key. Third key, I should say, trade the trend. Fourth key, give it room to breathe. Give the trade room to breathe. I'm amazed at how many people get into a trade. They think they're going to go make all this money. They're so excited about it. They buy the stock, they buy the whatever it is, ETF, whatever they're trading. And at the first sign of, of a pullback, boom, they're out. They, they jump out of the trade. And before you know it, they've sold their position, they've lost money, 
And the next day the trade turns and it continues going higher. Folks, this is all emotion. This is emotion. One of the keys to being a great trader and to actually making money trading is to let, to allow the stock or the ETF, whatever is your trading, allow it room to run. If you come over to a chart, which we're going to do right here, if you come over to this chart, you're going to notice that, first of all, let's scale out. Is there anybody who would look at that and say, that's not a bullish trend? Yeah, forget the uh, big dip over here, but you know, for the last year plus, Anybody that would look at that and say, yeah, that's not a bullish stock. And the answer is no. I mean, anybody in their right mind would say that is obviously has been bullish. But now let's zoom in here a little bit. And what you're going to find, let me find my pen. Where did my pen go? There it is. What you're going to see in here is even though this has been bullish over the last, uh, you know, from May through, uh, through July here, you had moments. You had this moment here. 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 These are moments where the stock had to take a break. It had to take a breather. Just like if you were running a marathon. If you were running a marathon, you can't just, you know, sprint all the time. What do you have to do? You have to kind of, you know, pace it. You have an ebb and flow to your pacing, if you will. And you kind of need to, you know, contract a little bit so that you can expand and contract and so that you can expand. Far too many traders, they get into these little short-term contractions and they bail. And they don't just bail, but they actually flip positions. They go into a bearish position. They either buy puts or they start shortening the stock. And then the trade just turns and it continues bullish. It goes back to the last key, which is to stay with the trend. Assume that the trend is in motion and not just stay with the trend, but give it room to breathe. You know, too many people, they get into these trades and they don't allow for the ebb and flow. Consequently, they're constantly stopping out. But and you know what? It wouldn't have been the end of the world if you stopped out in here and you re-entered at one of these other entry opportunities. It wouldn't be the end of the world if you did that. But what's horrible and what so many people do is they jump out at the wrong time, right? As it's just starting to contract a little bit. And now they've lost a little bit of money and they freak out and they never want to trade again. Or they just assume that the market makers are screwing them or, you know, the big money in Wall Street's taking advantage of them, whatever. Look, folks, if you want to trade the market, you got to give your trades room to breathe. Now, whenever we talk about how much room to breathe, that's potentially a subject that we might want to uh, come back and discuss. Uh, I like to use moving averages. You see moving averages on my chart here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. Typically speaking, more often than not, I will use one of these moving averages as the place where I will set my stop. Now, if you're not familiar with stops, uh, stops are just simply an order that we put in with the broker that says if the stock gets down to this price point, then get out of the trade. So I usually use moving averages. You can use a parabolic SAR. You can use all sorts of different techniques. Um, the key is that you give the trade room to breathe. And if you will discipline yourself to give the trade enough room to breathe, you'll stay in more trades. You'll cut some of the losing trades and you'll be able to ride uh, the great trades. All right. So that is key number four. Give the trade room to breathe. Key number five is cut the losers. Cut the losers. You know, of all the issues that I've dealt with over the last 12 years, teaching people how to trade stocks and options and all the stuff that we've done. Of all the issues that I've worked with, maybe the hardest is getting people to let go whenever the, the trade's gone bad. Look, if the trade's bad, it's bad. The statistical odds, if you've never thought about this before, the statistical odds are that two out of every three trades will not do what you want it to do. It's really simple. Stock can only go three directions. It can go up, it can go down, it can go sideways. And so if you get into a trade and it starts going down, well, that's one of the three directions it could go, right? You're wanting it to go up. You buy the stock, you want it to go higher. That's one out of the three directions it can go. It's only a 33% chance that it's going to do that. Then there's a 33% chance that it won't do anything. It'll kind of stagnate. There's a 33% chance that it'll go down. So what happens when it starts going down? Well, the reason we use stop orders is to cut out the emotion and make that decision for us. As the trade starts to go down, it gets us out of the trade. But far too many people, what they do is they look at the trade and they're like, well, if I hold it a little while, it might come back. They perpetuate the pain. And then they watch it and they, it keeps going down and it keeps going down. And finally... You know, for most people, by about the time it gets to the bottom, that's when they've had all the pain they can handle. They sell in a, in a panic, say, well, I'll take 10% of what I put into it or 20%, whatever it is, you know, whatever your losses are, they go ahead and lock in the loss. And then sure enough, boom, trade turns around and it starts going higher. 
Look, folks, if you want to be a great trader, you've got to learn to cut your losses. Cut your losses. When the trade is busted, when it moves below your stop point, which should be part of your trading plan from day one, when it moves below that point and you say, you know what, I'm not in this trade anymore. You get out of the trade, you cut the losses, and you let the winners run. Let the winners run. You know, again, far too many people that I work with, they see a profitable trade and they take the money because they're like, oh, there's $100. I want to take my profits while I can. And then they have a losing trade and, oh, I'm down $4,000. I'm going to hold it until maybe it comes back. And then it never comes back. We want to flip that. We want to cut it when it's like a $100 loss or a $200 loss. And we want to let it run when it's a big profit and uh, go lock in all those profits later. Okay, so key number five is to cut the losers. And then here's key number six to picking great trades and making money. Get out of your own way. Get out of your own way. You know, so many people that I've worked with over the years, they they just, didn't, they're in their head. They're in their head and they will go in there and they'll, they'll try to find a pattern that doesn't exist. They try to justify a trade. They fell in love with something and, you know, they loved Apple. They loved Tesla. They loved whatever it was, you know, and then the trade's going the wrong way and they're losing money and they're down three or $4,000 and they keep trying to justify it. Get out of your own way, folks. Learn how to identify the trend. Learn how to determine if you're uh, in a profitable trend or if you're in a, in a non-profitable trend. And if you're in a profitable trend, hold the trade. And if it's turned against you, cut the trade and move on. L don't, don't be so emotional about it. Get out of your own way. And if you'll learn how to do that, then you can obviously be a much better trader, okay? So these are just six keys. These are just part of the uh, techniques that I teach people how to use and to do whenever they're trading the stock market. If you want to know my entire trading system, though, uh, you can do that. It is available for you over at trademaestro.com. We're a little late on my slide here. Sorry about that. If you want to learn more, just visit me over at trademaestro.com. And uh, over at Trade Maestro, I teach all of my principles, all of my techniques, my strategies, and all the stuff that you see me sharing here on social media. Um, you'll get all of it there over on the website. And if you're ready to identify those winning trades right now, you say, hey, you know what? I want to pick winning stocks. Well, guess what? I have, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I have a challenge for you. Learn how to pick your trades. Learn how to do better analysis, how to identify some strategies. Learn how to write your trading plans and to use indicators, manage your risk, lower your risk, and ultimately make money. And you can do all of that in only 21 days with my 21-day Pick Winning Stocks Challenge. So here's my challenge to you. Would you take that challenge after 21 days? If you knew how to identify which direction the trade is going, if you knew how to identify if a stock is in a bullish trend or in a bearish trend, if you knew how to identify that the trade had turned against you, would you like to know how to do that in just 21 days from now? Well, if you'd like to do that, then visit me over at trademaestro.com because that is the Pick Winning Stocks Challenge. And just 21 days from right now, you can be there. And I promise it's fantastic, simple, simple solutions, simple system, and it just works. All right. So I got the link here uh, below the video or above the video, wherever it is here. And of course, you can always visit us over at trademaestro.com. Uh, by the way, if you are not presently subscribed, then please do so. Depending on where you're watching this, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Uh, subscribe, like, friend, whatever you need to do so that you get all of the alerts of the videos that I'm pushing out. And uh, then you can know when they are all there. And if by chance you miss some, just visit us over at trademaestro.com. You can check out on the blog and all the videos are posted there. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think and if there's some other videos you'd like to see me do. And until next time, happy trading to all of you. Talk to you soon.